How's it going? This is Chad Haig reporting from Southern India. I'd like to continue these series of videos in our missing link news show in which we react to the headlines of the day, but with that crucial element restored, which might allow you to really understand what is going on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think I have a theory about what the headlines of recent days have in common. It seems to have something to do with the dimension of temporality, in that these headlines seem to have come from the future and arrived a little earlier than they were supposed to. For example, it's not just that there's a threat of a third world war, um, it's already here. For what was the prediction of World War III put forth by someone like John Michael Greer 10 whole years ago, except um, his warning in one Archdruid report post that um, Russia and China going into an alliance and then adding Iran as a third member to that uh, would eventually lead to a situation in which the U.S. would be fighting against all three and it would lose. Well, that was merely hypothetical 10 years ago. Now we actually have the war against Russia and the war um, against Iran. Um, and um, they are not really going as well as the media would like you to think in Ukraine, for example. Uh, we found that despite sending over a hundred times more money to Zelensky than Kamala Harris got, keep in mind that Kamala Harris's billion dollars uh, that was supposedly raised in an, or an organic grassroots movement by concerned citizens mostly consisted of just 58 of them. Yes, there are the, no fewer than 58 billionaires who have publicly endorsed Kamala and certainly many more who haven't publicly done so but are still funding her. That's the organic grassroots movement of concerned citizens, citizens who are ultimately concerned about keeping the funny money government spending um, uh, going in order to have another couple trillions of dollars in spending end up ultimately just in their pockets. But be that as it may, the um, warning that um, there would be a major war with Russia and Ar Iran from 10 years ago is no longer a warning. It's already here. And um, once again, they might have raised a billion dollars for Kamala Harris, but they've raised over a hundred times that much for Zelensky. And of course, how much money have they also uh, raised for the war in the Middle East? Um, and this is something which, in a certain sense, they knew was going to happen. They just would have preferred for the open war with Iran to have waited just a few more days. I mean, where I am, it's already Monday, November 4th, 2024. If they could have just waited just until, like, tomorrow, after, you know, people had... Um, by and large, you know, already gone to the polls and left or early voted, then that would have been really helpful, but that didn't happen. Another thing which was supposed to wait just a little longer is um, the jobs report we got just the other day, which uh, people like Marco Rubio have called the worst in history, or at least the worst that he's ever seen. For even during the Great Recession, as somebody who... Um, was actively trying to find a job at that time as I graduated in 2011. Uh, the graduating class, uh, which up to that point in history had the worst job placement record in history, I remember in 2011 it was extremely hard to find a job because um, there used to be jobs reports uh, saying that there were only 50,000 jobs created for the whole country and half of those jobs, by the way, were um, in fast food. So um, that was proof that um, the Great Recession was in um, basically its lowest point. Uh, but somehow we have a jobs report from the other day uh, showing a much, much smaller number than 50,000. It was only 12,000 jobs for the whole country, um, and yet we're supposed to believe that this is evidence that the economy is still booming. You know, the same economy, which um, actually did go into recession in 2022, uh, but the experts uh, didn't allow us to say. So it was quite interesting that the freaking Wikipedia article for recession itself um, was edited about the same minute that um, the report came out that uh, there had been two uh, consecutive quarters of negative growth for the U.S. GDP, which, let's just face it, is a euphemism for saying the thing freaking shrank. Okay, so it shrank for two consecutive quarters. That's the classic textbook definition of um, a recession. But uh, if you studied economics in college years ago, you should probably go back to your old textbook if you still have it and cross that definition out because at that very moment, uh, the experts declared it to be out of date. Somebody went to the Wikipedia article, removed that reference, um, and then instead put in the 
you know, bullshit definition like, well, you know, a recession is actually a very complicated thing, um, which involves a number of factors which only a real expert like Krugman can diagnose and someone like you can't. And then um, whoever that was um, in the White House <laughs> then locked down the Wikipedia article so you couldn't um, perform the Orwellian thought crime of simply citing which your freaking textbook in college said was a recession. But be that as it may, if I remember correctly, um, when he was asked about this, Krugman... Um, um, said in response, well, we're not really in a recession because real experts use different criteria than two consecutive quarters of shrinking GDP. And specifically, we can't be in a recession right now because the job numbers are still good. Well, I don't know how you can defend that today for who would say, quote unquote, the job numbers are still good when you've only created 12,000 jobs in a country of over 300 million when there were, oh, how many layoffs over the past year? We don't really know the exact number, do we? But I've seen some very, very big numbers. So if over a million people lost their jobs and only 12,000 jobs are now out there for those people to try to compete for, um, if you have a situation like that, isn't it even deceptive to say there were 12,000 new jobs? Isn't it more like you would have to uh, measure that up against all the jobs lost and then get a negative number? But uh, just as um, the shrinking GDP still somehow had to be coerced into seeming to be some form of growth, even if it's just a negative growth, even these 12,000 jobs can't really appear as the loss that they are. They still have to appear as evidence of a booming economy. For th Indeed, that was the narrative of the past four years, that name. Even as you subjectively feel like everything in your life has gotten worse as your standard of living has tripled, and as 80% of Americans now consider fast food to be a luxury, like people used to think of, say, Red Lobster 20 years ago, which, by the way, doesn't exist anymore either. That's another um, business which has disappeared as a result of this booming economy, the only thing they could cling to was the claim that the job market was strong, even if it was found out later that a lot of the jobs which were created over the past few years were beyond bullshit. Um, they weren't just the sort of uh, New Deal jobs which Roosevelt funded back in the Great Depression, such as in my village. I still remember there's a giant uh, useless ditch in the middle of the village which nobody uses, which um, when I asked one of my teachers back like in third grade about it, um, she said, oh, that was a, a New Deal project. Uh, Roosevelt um, tried to um, stimulate um, his way out of the Great Depression by paying people to do useless work um, with government funds because at least then they'd have some money to contribute to the economy and digging a huge ditch which nobody uses in the middle of the village was one such job. Well, um, that actually seems really utilitarian in comparison with the really bullshit jobs which were created by government over the past few years uh, since a lot of them had to do with quote-unquote processing migrants. Well, what the hell does that mean except paying people uh, to pay people to break our laws for what were these uh, processors of migrants really doing, except uh, giving these people debit cards with, what, five-figure sums of money to then go out and, um, you know, buy all the stuff that you actually have to work for. That's what a lot of these jobs were. Oh, and also um, releasing people back into the country who had criminal records, including people from Afghanistan who were actually part of terrorist organizations that killed Americans. I mean, what more do you want as proof that somebody is not fit to be in the United States than that? But of course, the people who um, were getting the jobs, which proved that the economy could not be in recession because it was really booming, were doing that sort of beyond bullshit work. But it's interesting that now that um, the uh, media has to provide some sort of explanation for why you should give this very same administration another four years after they've actually put us now into a type of recession, for reasons I will explain in just a moment. Um, it's interesting that now they suddenly start talking like deep ecologists. It's interesting that uh, people who um, are otherwise cheerleaders for the same global technological system, which is the exact antithesis to nature, suddenly sound a lot like uh, Linkla or Arnes when they say, well, you know, we have to simply accept the decreased uh, number of jobs this last month because uh, an act of God from nature was the reason why even the most popular president in history, who's actually been disinvited and uninvited from all of um, the campaign events for his own freaking vice president. Um, so the, the most popular president, president in history who was leading the strongest economic recovery in history, which now only shows 12,000 net jobs, um, was, uh, though powerless and humble enough to admit that he was powerless against an act of God from nature itself for their 
explanation for why only 12,000 jobs were created in the whole country was uh, there was a hurricane last month. And it affected a few states, but certainly not all 50. And I'm not making light of the suffering of the people who were affected by that hurricane, uh, the same ones, by the way, that... Um, Biden administration told, uh, we can't help you because we bankrupted FEMA by, um, giving the money to migrants. Oh yes, the same migrants, um, who they had to give money to, to create the illusion of a strong job market, uh, gr uh stro strong job numbers and a booming economy. The same migrants, by the way, who are currently hauling ass to the uh, U.S. border, there's a 4,000-person migrant caravan on foot in northern Mexico as we speak, trying to reach the United States, and specifically New York City, before the erection, because even these migrants are skeptical of Kamala's uh, re-election chances. They realize that they need to get into New York as fast as possible uh, before that border gets shut down, because they want that $10,000 debit card among the other benefits given to people as a reward for breaking our laws. But um, be that as it may, um, the uh, president of the United States um, has been humble enough to admit that um, he was unable to stop um, the hurricane from uh, affecting the job numbers because we all know that out of all 50 states, um, only a few of them were actually affected by the hurricane. And the other excuse they get, uh, they give is that um, there were uh, strikes, such as by the dock workers um, in various port cities in America, which lasted, what, about three days? About three days. So it's interesting that um, the only uh, excuse they can give for why all 50 states in the United States cumulatively gives only 12,000 new jobs, which seems to me to be an indicator that the economy is not just risking a recession, it's literally in it right now. Well, they sound like deep ecologists by saying, well, you should accept these abysmal numbers because, um, you know, we're humble enough to admit that uh, we can't stop the rain, even though um, we promise you that we could do exactly that when we were trying to pass the Green New Deal. After all, what is the logic behind dumping trillions of dollars into things like um, solar panel and uh, wind uh, turbine and uh, electric car companies, which actually can't really make a profit on their own. Even Tesla itself laid off about 10% of its workforce this year because um, the uh, Tesla um, electric car is so expensive to manufacture that they weren't really able to make a profit despite selling a ton of them unless they found other ways to cut costs like cutting their workers. So um, it's interesting that when uh, the government is stepping in to uh, uh, pump money into these clean energy sources, which actually are not profitable on their own. Um, they um, are basically justifying it by saying this is our only way to stop global warming, which is another way of saying this is our only way to control the weather. But when um, the weather is the reason they didn't create more jobs, um, then suddenly it's something that they have to humbly admit that they have no power to control. Now, why is it that I say that we're already in a recession, despite the fact that Krugman um, would like to ban us from even saying that word? Well, it seems to me that another indicator that we're already in recession was the thing which the Fed did recently, which was misunderstood even by people who oppose the current administration. When the Fed cut interest rates right before the erection, people kind of misinterpreted that as the Fed trying to give a little extra help to get the current administration reelected because the um, house sales had declined to uh, like an all-time low. Mortgage applications are at an all-time low for indeed who could afford to buy a house in certain metropolitan areas where every home is over a million dollars. Interest rates were like at 7%. So I'm guessing um, to buy a house in such a job, in, in such a housing market, you'd have to spend, what, $10,000 a month um, on house payments for an itty bitty house, uh, never mind the cost of, you know, things like insurance, etc., which, you know, if you're in the state of Florida, you could easily be spending as much on insurance for a house that's at risk of being hit by a hurricane as people used to spend per month on the house itself. That's how much costs have gone up. Uh, well, the, um, uh, people who were critical of this administration suspected that um, the Fed was going to revive the housing market just in time for the erection by cutting interest rates a little bit, only to find that the housing market is still 
at its worst point ever. Despite having the interest rates cut, um, nobody really is buying houses, at least no one who's an ordinary working American. It's interesting that in certain areas, about 50% of the houses that are sold are paid for with cash, and oftentimes not even by people who are from this country. A lot of the houses that do sell at these exorbitant rates are just being bought up by investors from China who want to um, seize control of a lot of the housing market in the United States in order to then, I guess, rent it out at exorbitant rates, whatever exorbitant rates they demand. Desperate Americans who don't want to be homeless will be forced to pay it. And yet this is just more evidence of a booming economy for a healthy economy is <laughs> one in which the only people who can buy houses in the country are investors from China who are trying to control and dominate and um, gain uh, ultimately a political advantage over this country. Isn't that right? Well, it's interesting that um, the fact that the housing market did not ever recover despite cutting the interest rates is something you have to bear in mind um, is a confirmation of the reason why the interest rates were cut in the first place. Um, the real reason why the Fed cuts interest rates is um, as an indicator that the economy is already in recession. So you raise the interest rates to stop inflation from an economy that's being overheated by the, all the money you pump into it. And then you cut the interest rates when the economic conditions actually go into ones like a recession. And um, whereas that's kind of more hypothetical um, in the sense that you could still find some way to wiggle your way around it, like all of the people who were betting everything on the hope that um, this uh, rate cut would uh, revive the housing market and allow them to actually get a buyer for the million dollar home that they're trying to sell in one of these metropolitan areas, which let's just face it, a lot of these homes are, you know, like, you know, they're, they're itty bitty little, little shacks, basically. They're still trying to sell for a million dollars. Um, I think that uh, the uh, job numbers though are even less open to interpretation. Um, it's not at all theoretical to say that 12,000 new jobs in a country of over 300 million cannot be the sign of a healthy economy. But this is exactly what you would expect from a presidency for whom the only economic productivity they could generate was through funny money government spending to pump into unproductive and unprofitable clean energy sources, which the politically connected happen to own stock in, and um, to creating even more bullshit jobs like paying people to pay people to break our laws. The question, though, is whether this will sway enough voters to change their mind about what they think the next four years should look like. But either way, whoever takes office in January is going to be overseeing an economy that is not merely going to be at the risk of recession, but is already in one.